Hi guys, it's Paul Blaine from eLearning for You slash Affinity Training. I have to actually change that this week because we've had a bit of a rebranding, so it's LP Training. You'll notice it on the website. It still means the same thing, eLearning for You, and it's still a face to face side as well with the training side of the business. But if you hear me say LP from now on in, same thing, same company. We haven't gone anywhere or disappeared. We're here, it's 4.30, it's a Friday. I'm hoping you've all had a great week. Um, if you're joining in now, thank you very much for, uh, for coming every week to listen to the topics that we discuss. Um, and we have done a range, a number of those subjects over the, the last few weeks. It, it seems a while back now from when we first started. Um, but the reality is we keep coming up with the topics. You keep coming in and watching and we get some wonderful feedback. So please keep that coming in and we will keep doing this for you. It's um, a case this week of part two if you like. So last week we started the journey of what we class as the five major key lines of inquiry for uh, the CQC inspectorate. Uh, so what we've got to be governed by if you're within health and social care. And last week we talked about SAFE and you, you should have gone away thinking to yourself that everything that you did in your organisation actually aligned itself very nicely to SAFE. We had uh, moments where we were discussing uh, things such as recruitment, great comments on that, um, all the way through to uh, areas of risk assessment, competencies, training, etc., to fit into the safe mechanism. Now, this week, as part two of, of the five that we're doing in this, we are going to be looking at effective. Um, this is actually, whilst last week I said safe, ultimately important to safeguard the people in your care, safeguard your employees. Um, this is actually very much where I class as management. Um, and effective is basically saying that, that we're doing things right or we're going to evidence that we're doing things right. So I'm going to concentrate quite a bit this week on what that effective means. Try and give you some uh, healthy tips uh, that you may be able to go into your workplace with if you're a manager and have a look around and see whether you believe you are meeting this requirement. If you're a member of staff, an employee, frontline service, carer, senior, whichever position you may hold within your organisation, it's a case of making sure that you personally are effective and contributing towards your organisation's overall goal. So that's where we want to concentrate it this week. As always, it's an interactive session, so if you do want to ask a question, we have uh, Becky who's holding the camera. I'm going to turn it on her at the end because this will be Becky's uh, last turn at holding the camera for well, a good couple of months because she goes off on maternity so we'll wish her well at the end of this um, because she's done such a great job of holding the camera but she'll read out any questions if you want to pose them on even if you want to leave her a comment wishing her best of luck um, luck's maybe not the right word but uh, best wishes at the end of the day CQC whether we like it or not, they are the governing body of what we do. They are uh, what govern the Health and Social Care Act. And their inspection report is key to your business development. Uh, anybody who doesn't believe that, um, you really need to actually take a look at what outside of the industry is, con is concerning itself with our industry. And that would be your insurance companies asking for higher premiums if we don't get good or above an inspection ratings. Or the way that banks are restructuring refinance through credit uh, if you don't hit the goods or above. So it is becoming such a big thing uh, that we now need to actually see it as the, the, the key principle of what we're trying to achieve in our business, particularly for managers, um, because it's a little bit, I've said this before in articles I've written, it's a little bit like football management. If you want to get the top jobs, then you have to have a CV which speaks loud volumes about you. And, and having a good CQC inspection report behind you is a critical part in all of that. And that's why, I, the reason why I'm talking about this is because of this here. Because this is the bit that you can make the difference. Is your business effective? Is it value for money? Now, a big question is that. And it's a question that I need you to really think about. Is it value for money? Are people getting what you promise or what you pledge? And it's your job as a manager to make sure that the answer is yes. We are delivering our service. We are delivering um, what we set out to do in the first place. 
Um, if you're not in health and social care and you're watching this, effectiveness runs in any business. It's any manager's bread and butter is to make sure um, that you're effective. Don't mix it up with efficient. Effective means you're delivering. I, I like to actually put it down to this. I like to say that effective basically means does it work? Now, you may say to yourself, uh, yes, of course it works, but think about every angle of your business that you do. Is your recruitment procedures working? Are you getting the right members of staff to come and work in your business that you want, that you want to achieve? Have you got your policies and procedures in place? Now, if you're an organisation out there like many that's got you know, 50 to 100 to, to even more policies and procedures, how do you know those policies and procedures are working? How do you know they're effective? How are you measuring them? How are you actually making sure that staff are adhering to them? Now, some of them, it may be obvious, but when you actually start to take another look at them, you start to realise that you're probably adhering to half of the policy and procedure. But you've legally set out that you're going to adhere to all of the policy and procedure. And it can be the downfall when you think you're being effective, but realistically, you're not. Now there's another bit as far as I'm concerned in the inspection, those five principles, those key lines of inquiry. Uh, one of the other ones that I'll talk about as the last subject in, in a couple of weeks time is well led. Um, so I'm just going to put this down here because in theory, if you want to score high on that category there, then you need to score high on this category here because that is, is the management team leading the service well, leading the staff well, leading the organisation well. Well, they can only lead an organisation well or a staff team well if they're an effective manager and they've got policies and procedures in place that are effective. So let's start to look now at what we mean by effective within your workplace. You have a clear infection control policy in place within your organisation. That infection control policy will determine what outfit staff wear, how they present themselves, are they clean and tidy, what PPE they use, or personal protective equipment to ensure that they don't cross contaminate or cross infect. It will ensure that they don't wear any items on them like long earrings or long nails that could cause damage to someone or damage to themselves. Um, there will be clear clinical waste uh, policies in place and, and how we deal with that. So think about it. All of that is being effective. We are being effective because with infection control we are doing everything we can set out in policy and training to ensure that we safeguard the people that live or work within the environment of that organisation. That's why we have it. Also we're doing it to protect people outside of the organisation. So our family members, our loved ones, our, the people, our friends, because we don't want to take any uh, possible infection or disease out of our work environment and pass it out there into the community for it to actually spread. Now, if we take all the right precautions, if we do everything correctly, then we are being effective. If we don't, then we're being ineffective. And it's up to a manager to ensure that actually we are being effective. So, when you're on the floor walking around the floor, are staff adhering to the principles of your infection control policy? If not, you have to be effective, you have to address that. Are we actually following the code and conduct of that policy and procedure? Are you competency assessing staff? Are you bringing it into your supervision? Are you giving out uh, clear evidence to show that if you have spotted something, you've done something about it and then you've reviewed it to make sure that that new control measure you've put in place has worked. That's being effective. Now there'll be many an occasion if you're a manager watching this where if you were asked the question, give me an example or show me evidence of when you've been effective, that you could use that scenario. But if you're saying it verbally, then in reality, that's not evidence. Evidence would show a clear audit trail of how you've done it. Have you identified an issue? Have you put a resolve into that issue and has that resolve worked? That's what the inspector is looking for when it comes to being effective. Your organisation will have clear 
uh, values and goals and objectives? How are you measuring against those to make sure they're being met? If your value is to deliver care in a dignified way, what evidence do you have to support that that's being done? Now, it could be that you've trained all your staff. Um, but what has happened as a result of that training? I've said this on, on many weeks. How do you actually know the training has worked? How have they put it into a practical element? Whether it's a competency assessment or whether you're, you're bringing it into the supervision and appraisals to make sure that staff are competent and confident in what they're doing. Um, because ultimately, um, when you have your inspection, the visual side of this is going to be seen by the inspector. And let's just put that into example. If they've seen someone dealing with something where they should have wore uh, disposable gloves, and the inspector now sees that person not wearing the disposable gloves, then automatically you're not effective because your policy didn't work, your training didn't work, your competency didn't work. Because right now, right here, I can see that that person is doing it wrong. So how can you possibly be effective? And that's what we're trying to get into when we're thinking about the word effective. Does it work? Many different scenarios you can think about in your organisation to work out, does it work? Think about them all. I concentrate there on an infection control scenario. There's lots of things that you could see. If I have done a staff needs assessment, does it work? Have I got enough staff on the floor? Have I got enough staff to ensure that my... Uh, the people that are in, uh, using our service um, or living in our home or, or their home are cared for and there is the right number of people to deliver that. Have we? It's no good just saying yes we have but how are you evidencing that? How are you showing it? How are you quality checking that? And think about how are you going to present that to CQC? It's all being effective. If I have a hierarchy within the workplace, so let's say for instance I've got a manager, a deputy manager, seniors or care team managers, all the way down to my care staff on the floor and then my support team around them, are they working? Are they all doing the jobs that they're supposed to do? In other words, are we covering all bases? Or is no one clear on what they're supposed to do? I had a discussion with one of my team um, only yesterday, and it, it was quite a good point, and I'll just raise it um, again uh, for, for the benefit of yourself. And that was, if I looked at a department within our organisation, and I looked at why we created that department in the first place, what was the objective? And I wrote down ten things that I wanted that department to achieve. Now, six months in, I look at that department, and I see a lot of busy people. They're working so hard... That they're actually finding time in the day becomes problematic to them because they're doing a multitude of different tasks and jobs. But really you have to step back and ask yourself, are they an effective department? Because if they're doing three of those jobs that we set out, but they're not doing the other seven, then who's doing the other seven? And realistically speaking, the answer is going to be no one. So therefore, if it's no one, why did we set out the ten objectives in the first place? We haven't moved. We aren't effective. We haven't done what we tried to achieve. So I'm going to set you a little challenge this week, if I may. I want you to think about your own job role. And if you're a manager, really think about it. I want you to think about, if I wrote down on paper ten things that I believe I should do as part of my job role, I then want you to sit there and think to yourself, do I do all 10 of these objectives? Now, if you're a manager, that isn't actually, I assist people to uh, get up in the morning. It's not that. A manager's job is to audit. A manager's job is to make sure something's effective. A manager's job is to ensure that the processes that we have in place are working. So you want to be writing those things down as part of your 10. Are your risk assessments working? You've done them. Are they working? Are your people that you care for safe? Is your workforce happy? Is your workforce productive? Is it efficient? Are you meeting the mission statement that your business has set out? Are you value for money? These are all things that a manager should be putting down as their 10 points. 
Not the day-to-day -day thing that you're probably tied up in. Because your position has been created to lead this team, to make it effective. It's not been created to do the job of someone else. Now, that might be you know, easier said than done, but the reality of the situation is your business can't get to an effective area until you are able to turn around and say, yes, I'm achieving all 10 of those points. So don't kid yourself on, and I, it may sound like I'm being quite forceful there, I don't mean to, but don't kid yourself on. Write down the 10 points that you truly believe your role should be achieving. If you're ticking the boxes to all 10, brilliant. You're effective, and you've got an effective organisation. But if you're not, then you're not effective. This part of the CQC inspection is the audit. Now, the only way I can uh, explain an audit to you, the easiest way for me to do it, is let's think about an incident in an accident for a second. So you have someone who, well, I'll take it even further back than that. You are in a situation where someone has had an incident. So let's put the scenario where maybe somebody's had a fall. That would be reported into the incident and accident book. Now, that therefore has to be lifted from there into some form of auditing tool. Because what we're trying to look for is someone's had the fall. Okay, who's now looking at it to see whether we need to do something about this? What are the control measures that we're going to put into place? And how effective are they going to be? Now, if I look through that incident and accident report book and I see that this person has now fallen four times uh, in the space of three weeks, then in reality, the control measures that I've been putting in place have been ineffective or um, it's not actually solving the problem. But I've got to build to evidence that I've done something about that. Now, you would have that by looking at your care plan and seeing short-term care goals that have been put in place. Or you would have another mechanism to audit it. But what you don't want is CQC turning up to do an inspection, looking at your incident and accident records, seeing that an accident or an incident occurred, let's say, on the 23rd of March. Now they go look at the written case notes and they don't see any mention of it. They look at the care plan on that date and they don't see any control measure that's been put in place. They look at the risk assessment and they don't see any changes to it. So how could you possibly have audited that to ensure that the person becomes safe out the other end? What control measure are you put in place? Now if they then see another, another incident a week on, then they're going to ask the question, why did you wait for that to happen? And that's when we come to effective measures. Are they working? Are they in place? So have a think about how your organisation is working from an effective point of view. I've given you a couple of, of tips and ideas there, but this is, this is much bigger than that. I've asked you to write down 10 things about yourself. That's not just for managers, by the way. If you're a care team manager or you're a member of staff, let's start to have a think about what should your expectations be. If you're a manager, you really need to take some time out on this one and actually look at everything you are supposed to do from a day-to-day -day operation side of, uh, point of view and ask yourself, are we doing it right? Are we doing it right doesn't mean it works because it could be that your policy and procedure needs to be adapted or changed. But the reality of things here is does it work? Does it work for your client or your resident patient? Does it work for your staff team? Does it work for you? Are we running a well-oiled ship that is effective? So, I hope that sort of like just explained a little bit about what we're talking about when we talk about effective. As I said before, there's, there's so much more that you could uh, go off with regard to that. Um, but the big thing that I always look at in, in, in these terms is, is how we're evidencing it. It has to be more than verbal. We have to show those audit trails. Uh, going forward so that when we're asked the question are we effective we can produce the goods and show that we are. Being effective means that we're running the business the way the business was set out to be run. That original idea, that original goal. If you're from the care world, everybody that starts a care home, everybody that starts out in care, 
You want to deliver the highest standards of care that you possibly ever can. You want to change the lives of the people that you care for or give them such a high quality of life that they are happy and content either in their latter years or in years where they need so much support. That's what you're setting out to do. And the only way that you're ever going to be able to do that and achieve that is if you are effective. So, use auditing systems to help you. If you're with uh, e-learning for you or Elfie, um, then use the, uh, the LMS, learning management system that we have to help you. Use your spreadsheets that you will use to actually show and, and track audits. Use whatever it is that you need to help you, but make sure you're evidencing that you are effective. Whether it be staff minute notes and then reflection notes after that, whether it be supervisions, whether it be appraisals, it's all going to count towards that effective. Quality assurance with your residents. Ask them, are we effective? Explain to them that here is our values. Do you think these values are being met? We need to see everything feed through to make us an effective organisation. I hope that helps. I don't like to keep you too long on a Friday because I know you've got to get off and do things. Next week, um, we're actually having a week off. It's uh, the Easter weekend, so apologies for that. Um, I'd come on, but I'm sure you wouldn't. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll skip it for a week and we'll come back the week after. And we're going to be looking at the next key line of inquiry on that, so the next standard, which is going to be responsive. How responsive are we as an organisation? And again, I'm going to give you hints and tips uh, in terms of how you're going to evidence that. In the meantime, and I say this every week, and please take me up on the offer, leave some comments underneath this uh, video. If you've liked it, share it out to people you know who are in health and social care, or tell them to come on and like our Facebook page so they can too join in on some of these videos. Every other pre-recorded video is over on our website. Um, that's not changed, I think. I think that's still www.elearningforyou.co.uk. Um, if not, I'm sure they've done something that makes you go to the right site anyway. On top of there is a, a link that says uh, YouTube channel. Click it and you'll be able to see all the videos uh, that we've previously done. They're well worth a watch, I, I can assure you of that. So, when we come back after Easter at 4.30pm on the following Friday, so a week on, uh, well, it'll be two weeks today, if I'm right, yes, two weeks today, we'll be talking about uh, responsive under those key lines of inquiry. Jump in, ask questions. If you do leave a comment, we will get back to you. Um, we've got a whole team there that are willing to help you when you actually write these comments in. For the time being, I'm going to wish you a wonderful weekend. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope the sun comes out for us all um, and we can get some uh, relaxation time. If you are working, um, then think about some of the things that I've said and start to process them in your head as to are we actually effective. So I'm going to leave you for the time being. I did say I was going to do one last thing, um, and that is I'm going to take this camera, so sorry for the close-up, and I'm going to turn it around, and I'm going to get Becky to give us a wave. Um, and Becky, who is going off on uh, maternity. maternity leave, as you can see, we wish her well. And yes, thank, thank you, you very much for everything that you've done in holding the camera. Next week I'll probably have a tripod or the week after that. I don't know what's going to be the, the basis, but we'll have someone. So I'm going to turn it back round so it can be finished off. Becky, all the best. Um, to all those that I've uh, been with this week teaching, if you have watched this, uh, it's been an enjoyable week, so thank you for helping making my week good. And one last little shout out, it's nothing to do with training, it's my niece's 18th birthday today, so happy birthday, Amber Eatoff, and I'll see you later on tonight. For the rest of you, have a great weekend, thank you, goodbye.